Duchenne muscular dystrophy, it's a complex condition that affects every organ in the body. So it is important to know at which stage the patient is at. Is the patient ambulatory? Is the patient starting to lose ambulation? Or is the patient actually completely non-ambulatory? Because each stage will have different goals for therapy. So a patient that is ambulatory, our goal number one for the motor function is to keep him ambulatory as long as we can. For these, we use steroids as part of the standard of care. We use physical therapy and things like this. Also the cardiac therapy, the cardiac prevention therapy is starting now much earlier than it used to, to try to prevent difibrosis from, um, from starting and causing more problems down the road. The pulmonary function in an ambulatory patient is not affected, but are, they are around 10 to 12 years of age. That's when they will start having the need, for example, for non-invasive ventilation at night time. Then if you're looking at the patient that is early non-ambulatory, we have to focus mainly on the upper extremities. So keeping the function of the upper extremities, for example, for feeding, for transport, for getting dressed, those are the, the most important goals at that specific age. At that point, the respiratory function may start getting uh, more complicated. So the patients may start needing more non-invasive ventilation. And for the cardiac function, we are doing exactly the same. We're adding different medications to control the fibrosis and keep that cardiac function going. If the patient it's already late non-ambulatory, the arms may be already weak, we have left the hands, and that's where we focus our attention at that point is to prevent contractures and to keep that mobility for different activities like driving their own uh, wheelchair. For their lungs, these patients at that point will start requiring daytime ventilation sometimes or extra oxygen through the day. And for cardiac function, we're the stage where the heart failure may be one of the first complications and one of the first reasons for admission to the hospital. So like I said, I think it's important to remember to try to classify where the patient is at and then later on try to target each of the organs that get affected. Gene therapy, it's a very exciting type of uh, option for patients with different neuromuscular conditions, including Duchenne muscular dystrophy but it's very important to understand that these are not cures. These are only possible treatments. And for that reason, the standard of care, going back to the clinic, seeing the team, including the neurologist, physical therapy, nutritionist, and so on, it's extremely important to keep that patient going. And I think it's uh, important to keep in mind that um, when we're talking about treatment, so something like gene therapy, for instance, it's really designed to, to try to maintain muscle that you, that, that patients have. And so we have to set realistic expectations. You know, we don't want to create the perception that patients are going to get dramatically better, that patients perhaps in the ambulatory phase where you, realistically we can set expectations where patients may be able to maintain some of the motor skills that they may have or maintain the respiratory and cardiac function they may have. Um, such as ambulation or maintenance of independent breathing um, and maintaining cardiac function they have. And likewise, for the early non-ambulatory phase, as well as the late ambulatory phase, it's maintenance of what the patients have and whatever arm function they may have um, or respiratory and cardiac function they ha may have. Um, so I, I think it's important to emphasize the, the realistic expectations so that patients don't expect more than what we may um, realistically expect from patients um, who are receiving gene therapy.